as promised, we said that we would post a short interview that we did with Tashiki. So unfortunately, while we were at Worlds, when we were talking to him, we were talking to him during one of the sessions, so we actually didn't film what he was saying. And plus, neither of us really speak Japanese, so we wouldn't understand it. So what we did is, uh, we conducted this interview uh, through Google Translate. Obviously, Tashiki is a big fan favorite, and he was in the A session of the 85 kilos, and definitely lots of fans came out to support him, but he didn't really have the best performance, and he would be one to admit that as well. Yeah, so that's actually one of the first things that he told us. He said he's pretty disappointed in his performance at Worlds. He only made his opener in the snatch, 148, and then he um, missed his opener clean drink, 192, came back and made 193, and then went for a bigger jump and missed that. So he finished with a 341, ending in 10th place. But some of the same issues that we've seen in the past with helicopter, with the uh, jerk recoveries, and just having kind of unstable recovery positions seem to be the, uh, uh, the same issue that held him back again. Yeah, so when I talked to him actually, I asked him if there were any uh, injuries that he was suffering before this meet, and he actually said that he's having back issues. I asked him if it required surgery, and he communicated that he can just correct it through physio. One interesting thing is that in our preview, we thought that Japan would want be one of those countries that would do really well uh, with this level of competition, but it almost seems like a lot of them actually had some injuries or just underperformed, like Mochita in the 105 category. Okay. Like he just straight up predicted he would not have a good performance. Oh yeah, true. True. Yeah, he said that he was not feeling well. And when we asked him if, he, if there was anything in particular, he just says he doesn't know. He just didn't feel well. So we asked him when he first started lifting and kind of what prompted that, I guess. And what he said is he started lifting when he was 15 years old um, at a body weight of 60 kilograms. And prior to doing any weightlifting, he used to be a track and field athlete. And now he's a full-time weightlifter. He's not going to school or working in any other type of job. And his main goal at this time is to qualify for the Olympics in 2020 and it's in Tokyo. So I'm not sure if they're changing the, because I know they're changing the rules on uh, athlete qualification going from country to individual. Yeah. But then in that case, I know in previous years, the hosting country will kind of be able to field a different quotas for their teams. I wonder if oh, that'll okay, be the cool. same with the new qualification uh, process. Yeah, that'll definitely help and just we'll be able to see some, I guess, home favorites. So he's getting paid by the Japanese government right now to lift full time. And I asked him actually how much in USD but he said it was a secret and wouldn't tell me. That's interesting because I didn't know that there was professional weightlifting in Japan before this. Oh really? So um, his PRs uh, in the squats are 300 for back squat, 260 for front squat. He has snatched 162 in training, 158 in competition, and 202 in competition. His best deadlift is 282, and his best strict press is 104. And I asked him what his bench press PR is, and he says he never does bench because it's bad for shoulder mobility. It looks like he benches. <laughs> True. He also joined the national team when he was 20 years old. So basically over the course of his career, we asked him if there was any injuries that held him back over time, and he told us that he had some injuries to his right knee and also his right elbow, but he didn't really specify if any of those uh, injuries were kind of lingering or holding him back it in yeah. any way. but. He was definitely referring more to his back at yeah. this time. We asked him a little bit of his, about his diet just because he does have like quite an impressive physique, I would say. So outside of competition, he's usually not heavier than 87 kilograms. Oh yeah, me too. <laughs> and uh, he doesn't plan to move up a weight class before 2020. And he says that like, he doesn't count his macros or doesn't follow any special diet. So this is actually similar to like, I guess, what the Chinese lifters do. They don't have a specific diet, but they just eat, like, a balanced diet. Yeah, I think a lot of that actually has to do with maybe Asian culture in general. And it might just be, like, the science is there, except for, like, it's the food that is provided at the training centers, so they don't really have to think about it too much. That's true, so they just make it easy for the athletes, you know. And his favorite food is steak, and I asked him if he has that normally at the training center, and he says no, he eats mostly chicken. So one meet that he's looking forward to, uh, other than Tokyo, is the 2018 Asian Games. So this year, the Asian Games is held in Jakarta, 
uh, in Indonesia. That's going to be in August and September of this year. So this is different than the Asian Championships, which um, the difference happens is every year except for the year of the games, right? Because Asian Games is also four years. Yeah, that's right. And then the Asian Games is the multi-sport competition. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. So just for reference, Asian Games is uh, pretty highly competitive in the 85 kilo category. The last time it was in 2014. Uh, that was held in uh, Incheon in Korea, and that's when Tiantao and Kyanush had a really close neck and neck uh, battle there. And Tiantao won with uh, a really clutch 218 clean and jerk at the very end, which was a junior world record and yeah. still is. And then he won by uh, one kilo in the total by hitting 381. Yeah, and the reason why it's like so significant as well is just because. He was nine kilos behind after the snatch. So when we talked to him about how often he trains, he said he trains five days a week, um, and he squats every day, every day that he trains. Um, and I asked him what was more important between the back squat and the front squat, and he said he prefers the front squat. So I think this is similar to some other international lifters that we're seeing, like uh, some of Sheep's programs only have front squats. Yeah, uh, Ilya Klokov. Obviously, Toshiki strength is not the issue with him, so... True. <laughs> One thing that we asked him was about his bodybuilding program. He says that he does bodybuilding every day that he trains. So, everyone, do your bodybuilding. Or if you don't, and want to look like us, don't do your bodybuilding. <laughs> do your body preserving. <laughs> body salvaging. <laughs> so, he hopes that <coughs> this specific, I guess, program, or training five days a week, will help him achieve his goal of having a 165 snatch and 210 clean and jerk at Tokyo 2020. One thing that you might notice is he's actually not that far off from the snatch, right? Like his best training lift is three kilos away yeah. from that. So I'm surprised that he doesn't think he can snatch a little bit more, but... Yeah, and also with the clean and jerk, like 210, I don't think it's too lofty of a goal. Because I think a lot of his issues with the like his best results in clean and jerk has to do with his stability in the overhead position. Yeah, and he has the strength to do it. So if he's able to solve that issue, um, then I think the ceiling will just increase very dramatically. So. Yeah, like um, he said that his best clean is the two hundred two as well. So I guess he just doesn't bother trying cleaning heavier because he knows he can't jerk it. So if he was able to actually hit that three seventy five, I think these are pretty modest goals for him. Because if you look back at the 2016 Olympics, um, obviously it was won with a world record total by uh, Keanu Shostami, 396. But if he were to hit 375, then that would have placed him around 6th place. So one interesting thing about uh, Tashiki as well is he doesn't actually live at the training center. Uh, he lives at home with his parents still. He's actually a little bit outside of Tokyo, in Yokohama. I think one thing that kind of sums up Toshiki as a lifter is when Mike asked him, what lift do you like more, the snatch or the clean jerk? Squat. And then he started laughing. <laughs> so that concludes our Toshiki interview. This weekend we'll be doing an interview with Harrison Morris, youth world record holder in the clean and jerk. So if you have any questions for us that you would like us to ask him, please let us know. And it'll be a different format from this video as well. He agreed to do a FaceTime interview. So hopefully we can actually post some of the, I guess, raw footage from it. Once again, just put your questions in the comments below. And let us know if you like these kind of videos because maybe we'll try to get some Chinese lifters. In the future, um, if we have opportunities to interview any weightlifters of interest, just leave a comment on anyone that you think that we should try to reach out to and um, any questions that you may have.